we go back a little more than that. And uh, uh, you see, uh, retinopathy of prematurity at this time has become a, uh, it's already becoming a leading cause of childhood blindness uh, worldwide and it's also a problem for our country because uh, this is a newer problem as well as the emerging cause of blindness. And uh, of course we know that this is one disease where blindness is uh, preventable. Uh, so that's, uh, but the problem is I have highlighted here, a large number of babies in our country are presenting with bilateral irreversible blindness due to absence or a delayed screening. Uh, I want to go back to here, my friend, he's sitting here. It all started with him. He's almost like the father of our in India, that is Dr. Lingam Gopal. I think he came in 1990 to USA when I was doing my fellowship and uh, in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, and he told me that he has already started seeing our and managing some cases. I think that was a turning point for me, basically. And uh, when I came back to PGI at Chandigarh in 1991, that is when I started it. And you know, the PGI has the largest neonatal center in the country that has trained 60 to 70 percent of the neonatologists. In fact, the, with whom he worked, he was from PGI in Child Trust Hospital, the who was head, head, heading that hospital. So that's how the story started there. And uh, so it's really uh, nice of him. In fact, we go back, we did our residency together in PGI. Maybe PGI has to do something with our team. Here is Anand, he's, he's also from PGI. So this is last year when we have grown old, from young to old in Agra when we were having a course on ROP. This is the last year. So, but uh, I think, uh, uh, and this is 1995. I think we published back to back. These were the first reports. We published back to back in 95, where uh, he had 38% in the retrospective study. And I had given first time thesis to one of the candidates. Uh, and uh, who did it uh, prospectively one year, and it was 47.3%. So uh, that is where we realized that the problem is as big as anywhere in the world. And of course, subsequently, I have put up some of the figures that live births, this is from the uh, National Neurology Forum of India, 2005, the figures that 26 million per year, and the incidence of low birth weight is 8.7% if we take two kgs which that time probably arbitrarily we were taking. And there are 2 million newborns at risk for developing ROP. So you need that many, and that's how probably some of you, those who are, who are starting this program, uh, are there. So this, put, this is another one I'm putting up. These are some of the people, you see, since this course is such, uh, you see, Mr. Azad is there, and you have here Dr. Harsh Kumar. You know, he was before even Dr. Azad, he doesn't do uh, now. Uh, ROP, but uh, he started ROP in Delhi, in All India Institute, in RP Center. And uh, I think uh, Professor Azad started somewhere in uh, Kuwait and then subsequently. And uh, you can see Subhadra here. You see, uh, most of the other uh, uh, people, uh, those who are involved, uh, and Ale is there, uh, the anchor, and, uh, and this is recent one. This is Subhadra. She's so passionate, she'll be here. Uh, a little later. She organized this one for a very small group. So you see a lot of other younger people there. Uh, of course, Karobi is there. And of course, uh, we are, uh, Michael Tracy has specially come. And you have a lot of other young people, including Parija, who now is uh, uh, doing a lot of ROP work uh, in RP Center after Professor uh, Azad uh, has been renovated. So that's how the whole history starts for us and how we, and I already mentioned the study. Uh, this was another group which I think started very early, Rekha and Bhattu, from Bangalore. This is, uh, was uh, in 96, they published Maheshwari et al. This was from uh, All India Institute, RP Center, as well as the Department of Pediatric Maheshwari was from there. They had 20%. Workies also get from Delhi. They had 51%. This is uh, uh, later on. The recent one you have to look at, this is uh, 2012. This is from the rural Karnataka, which uh, Anand has published recently. The problem is as big, even in the rural area, 41.5%. I think some of us, you can see all of them, those who started all this, we got together. So we wanted to put some kind of screening strategy. So we did this and published uh, this in 2003 in Indian Journal. 
I, I, when Anand was with me, he did this, this as a thesis, and which has become like a landmark paper for us. I think this was the biggest problem for me. I wanted to publish that I birth weight babies things, but they wouldn't get published anywhere. Find me in Indian Journal, we did. And uh, this is one of the most cited, 10 best cited papers of Indian Journal. And I even got an LCD award. I think uh, that's also, uh, you also got for ROP, LCD award. So you can imagine. So this is given once in four years. So you can just look at 16% of the babies were more than 1750 grams in this particular disease. And 6.5% above 2 kgs. And 22% had a gestational age more than 32 weeks. So I think we were looking at various studies. I was just trying to put out. This was one published by us in Retina. This was the first one aggressive pushy ROP. Then Subhadra published on the Twin City Zone 1. And this is from the Paraksha in Narendra. This is a landmark paper, in fact, and uh, which they published in Archives of Child Diseases. I think it's very interesting. You have to look at this. We are totally in a different world. You look at all these three papers, and this is Jessner. Uh, she she's with uh, Michael Tracy. Look at this: 627 grand their mean birth weight and 24 weeks of period of gestation. And Azuma, this is from Japan, Tokyo, 773 and 25. And look at our, they are varying from 1228 to 1572 and gestational age. So that's where we are. We are in a totally different uh, sort of a scenario at this time. And uh, these were some of the other uh, ones, uh, publication uh, again here. Uh, uh, and you can see here also basically the same thing. And then uh, again from uh, uh, Prag Shah and uh, Narindran group, uh, this is the same one where uh, you can see this was 1572. Even I think recently we have published, and here also you can see the range was from 1500 to we wanted to just look at above 1500 grams. So you can see how many of them. These infants, they develop with such a high birth weight, which is more than 1,500 men. And uh, this is uh, from the Braksha's paper. You can see they give unblended oxygen. So you have a ROP, which is, looks like different, which is not even described. Probably this is an oxygen-induced kind of a retinopathy. So finally, after going through all this, where did we reach? So this was a National Neonatology Forum uh, guidelines, which are already published by them. And so at this time, the infants weighing less than 750 grams and born before 34 weeks of period of gestation, they are still. Of course, we are doing at this time a laser as being followed anywhere and we should the surgery also for stage four and five. And the outcome of laser in ETROP era, that is what is important. That's why I put this. You can use both diode and 532 laser. Favorable outcome, 100% if you have just high, what we call high risk pre-threshold. And of course, if you have a threshold, it comes down to about 90% and you don't even wait for threshold these days. You want to treat them early. And favorable outcome, maybe anywhere from 70 to 80% in cases of ATROP. And uh, I think you want to read, know about it. Again, we got together and when, uh, especially led by Subhadra, and we uh, put down uh, especially how the laser and which cases the laser should be done. So that has been published in this 2010 article uh, in uh, Indian Journal of Ophthalmology. I think this is very important. Anand knows about it. This, when our laser was not working, we started treating with 532. And so we got these cases together, retrospective data, and published in the British Journal of Ophthalmology in 2010. I think you can use the same laser which you have for anything. You don't need, not need diode. That is what the Western world, even till today, I think they are getting convinced it is not required. So use the same laser which you have for everything. You see, economy matters for us. There is no difference, even in the presence of Unica vascular landings, which is hemorrhage, and others, we didn't find any difference. There was no cataract, there was no difficulty in treating. So I think that's a very important publication and you must remember it. And of course, I think this is recently in American Journal 2013 we published that which are the cases after the laser that they are developing retinal detachment. That's very important. So most of the posterior zone one, the more the posterior disease, you will have a 
outcome where they may go into the attachment. Lower the gestational age and presence of prerectal hemorrhages and development of especially fibrovascular proliferation. I think the lens sparing vitrectomy here, again, this is the most important recent innovation. Ideal for 4A, 4B, and we are doing mostly these days 23G and 25G. And uh, this is one such case you can see uh, from our room connection where uh, the lens sparing vitrectomy has been done. And you can see otherwise, what is the solution here? You don't want them to go there. You want to prevent them from going to that stage. That is what is important. And of course, we did uh, work in that this is not, it doesn't finish there. There are a lot of structural sequeling, which are mentioned here, vascular chopsticity, narrowing of arcade, disc drag, macular heterotropia, and so many peripheral TRDs. I think we need to, because they, that is the way you might have situations. And uh, you may have, if it is a treated early, it's not that advanced. Myopia is also about 26%. In threshold ROV, we have 80% myopia and AP ROV 68%. So, myopia is significantly higher in eyes with Pusia Zone 1 or where there are retinal cells to one. So, that's very important. And why? We should remember this. We all have to be uh, absolutely uh, doing this high rate of preterm birth, increasing number of decus are opening. Neonatal care not optimal and ROP screening and treatment program not in place. That's why it's really creditable on and put up all the event called all of you here. And of course, inadequate treatment follow. This is the biggest problem. This is the almost uh, I'm coming to the end. We got to have in every district, there are already close to 600 SNCU, six newborn units, district level. They will they are provide they want to decrease the mortality, but we are going to have the biggest problem with ROP. And at this time, there is no provision for ROP screen. So look at that. You have to do something about it. So I would conclude my talk that ROP blindness is increasing rapidly in our country. This is a fact. And higher birth weight babies develop severe ROP in our country. That's also very clear. And screening is most important to identify the treatable uh, stage. So if you can identify that, treat promptly with laser, you get very good outcome. You can prevent the blindness. And lens-wearing vitrectomy is really promising.